Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jump Up Supercast, the only podcast on the internet where you can kickstart us to get on the Nintendo Switch. I'm Will, and joining me this week, Brandon. Not on the Xbox, which is sad. Ills. I was created by Shadow Incorporated. And Moosebell. If we convict Will, does that mean I'm the podcast host? No. Oh, well, that's, a, that's a shame. You don't have I the mean, votes. That's, that's, a, that's unfortunate. Sometimes you are. Uh, yeah. I nominate for uh, the podcast to be destroyed. If that <laughs> Restart from the beginning. Uh, how are you doing this week, boys? Good. I'm having a great time. You sound like it. You sound really excited. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm anxious, actually. Uh, anxious? Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, it's been about 154 days without a Nintendo Direct. Hey, My God! You know it has been. He's not wrong, folks. Yeah, How do you get so, out of bed? I'm feeling like this Thursday that we're getting a direct or oh Wednesday. God. I I'm so, prognosticating. Yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm within the calendar gonna... year of 2020, Nintendo Tuesday, will announce a game. That's a safe Tuesday start. at 9 a.m. So you're yeah. gonna listen to this podcast Monday when it gets announced. Yeah. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. It's gonna it, it's getting gonna announced. Gonna keep... Why are you yeah, setting them up for disappointment? Yeah, it's just look. No, you'll see. We'll, we're gonna be it's, right. We're gonna be right. It's the only yeah. thing I have to live for. So yeah. So <laughs> look forward you know, to Brandon's I'm, funeral next I'm, podcast. <laughs> Brandon, I'm coming around more and more to your side of things as time goes on. Um, but you know, there is there was news. There was news related to things that maybe you thought would have been in a direct this week, Whoa. but instead, mm. new path, new opportunity for people. At Platinum Games. They betrayed wow. us. Yes, Betrayalton. It's back. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> the arm, we don't worry about it. Uh, okay. So, late last week, we got, we got some rumors. Hey, Platinum might be like uh, doing something with a wonderful 101. Um, and then, it turns out, Monday, 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 they had an announcement for a wonderful 101 Kickstarter. Wow. Shocking. And you might say, that game's already out. What are you going to kickstart? The answer is, more versions is ultimately oh, yeah, the actual yeah. answer. Remastered. Um, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's technically the Wonderful 101 Remastered. Uh, and uh, there was three versions that would potentially get kickstarted. All three have been kickstarted. You can only look now, ultimately, but like as of 4 p.m. when we recorded this on Wednesday, it was like $1.35 million. Yep. So it... Blew right past the 50k goal to get a Switch version, right past the 250k goal to get the Steam, Steam version, version, and right past the 500k goal to get the PlayStation 4 version. They really um, underestimated underestimated how big this Kickstarter would be. Like, damn, 50k for the initial goal? Like, that's crazy. Well, I think it's worth mentioning because I've seen some takes of people saying, so it only costs 50k to port a video game? No, yeah, of course not. Um, that is not how this works, uh, ultimately. No. Uh, in fact, the number that might be, we still know this is accurate, but I would say it's much closer to the 200 gap in between that 50 and 250k than the initial mm-hmm. 50k Yeah, goal. and then that 250k between the Steam and the PS4 uh, version. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, think it's more just to help Platinum than anything else, because they're the first time they're ever going to be self-publishing a game. So they mm-hmm. explained in the interview, they're like, oh, why Kickstarter, right? And part of it is, hey, we, we want to... Um, we need to know for ourselves, is there demand for us to self-publish? Is there demand for Platinum Games? You know? Right. Yeah. Um, and so that certainly helps. Also, I, I'm i guessing the Switch port was going to happen no matter what. You know? Um, yes. The games come out in April, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and and we got... Part of the reason that you're probably right about that is we got interviews with them where they talked about a lot of this stuff that's interesting. I'd recommend yeah. looking up some of those interviews. But in one of them, they asked, hey, Nintendo has co-ownership of this IP. How did this go about being on other systems? And essentially, Platinum went to Nintendo and said, we want to port this game. We believe in this game. Um, and Nintendo said, well, like, sure, you, you can port it onto the Switch, seemingly. But they said, we want to put it on other systems as well. And Nintendo said, well, then you're going to have to find funding because we're not going to fund you to put this on other platforms, you know? We're not um, going to fund you, but we will allow it. If you can yes. find the funding, you have our blessing. Which is crazy, because, like, again, Nintendo does co-own this IP, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so like, the, the fact that they're even letting... I mean, it's funny, they mentioned that same interview. They're like, the, the interview asked her, so Nintendo's letting you do this? And Kami's like, yeah, we don't even know why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> like, they're weirdly nice about this. <laughs> you know, uh, because uh, this is... Funny. 
the last time that Nintendo straight up sold IPs they had slight ownership of was like Rare back in the day, and this isn't even that. So this is a completely unprecedented thing for Nintendo. Yeah, to Nintendo collect them is to do. supposed to copyright Nintendo on a game you boot up on PlayStation Four. So now we officially have. Well, the only thing we're missing is a PS is a Sony game. Well, no, the MLB The no, Show is going to have Sony. To so now game. we have a game that has the other company's name on every other platform. Yeah, everybody's yeah, third party yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Is there an Xbox game on Sony? Uh, no, no, but there's but the Switch there's no games. Xbox games Door on counts. Nintendo. Also, yeah. no Xbox Game Studios publishes Minecraft. Correct. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah. Good point. So we did it. So um, yeah, everyone's everywhere. Uh, that's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, and Wonderful 101, specifically, I want to talk about this. Um, uh-huh. I'm glad it's getting a second chance, you know? Uh-huh. I'm glad it's getting a second We've talked about this game plenty on this podcast, and we may have some polarizing opinions here. Um, but overall, I think the game is pretty good. And, you know, obviously Platinum believes in it. Obviously Kamiya believes in it. And I'm happy he got a win, you know? Hideki Kamiya has not made a game in seven years. Yeah. Uh, Last one was the wonderful one one, you know, um, to actually release because then Scalebound happened and that wasted four or five years of his life and that sucked. <laughs> yeah, um, especially when you put it that way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but but, say, that yeah. was that was the most depressing spin you could put. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, you know, like, Hideki Kamiya needed a win, and seeing the way this Kickstarter has blown up, even if the game ends up still not selling great, they've at least made their money back and more on this port job, right? So this sure. is a no risk endeavor for them, mm-hmm. right? Um, and they do know they hey, oh, like, hey, we have some really hardcore fans, you know? Yeah, that's good. That that that's a you know, I, I think that's a encouraging thing to them, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that the wonderful one hundred and one is the right fit for a platform like Kickstarter, right? I mean, yes. still the most successful video game Kickstarter. I, I, well, I don't. Maybe there's do they count like Star Control or whatever it is? What's the game? What's the game that broke through all the records? Help yeah, me out. I forget what it's called. Whatever the space game that that is, it's, it's it's crowdfunded like Star three hundred million. Yes, Star Citizen. It's crowdfunded an insane amount of money, but like for a singular game, I feel like Shinmu for like in terms of retro revivals got the most money. I still think, right? Yeah, and that um, was still only like six million, which is like a lot for a crowdsourced game, right? But like, yeah, not enough to really like make a new game, <laughs> you know? big triple A game, which right? Which is why yeah. they got you know, I mean, the Kickstarter that Kickstarter in particular was about hey. Then we're able to convince Deep Silver to give us money to put into this project, right? Yeah. Uh, um, so I, I imagine they're going to be showing this number to every publisher they're ever going to after this, yeah. right? They'll be like, hey, look at it. Look, there is demand there. And like, it's worth noting, like Kickstarter games, like you could say, oh, well, is this all it's going to sell? Is the people we're kickstarting? No, because the numbers very clearly show, even for hardcore projects like Shenmue, the amount of people who actually buy the game when it releases is so much more than that Kickstarter number. Yeah. You know? I'm pretty sure um, Shantae and the Half Gene Hero sold a lot more than the Kickstarter was. Yeah, than what the, you know, yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, sure, it's only like, if you look at the individual number, it's like, oh, only 15K people or whatever, how many ever it ends up 20 being. something uh, like that. Right yeah, now. it's at 21,000 right now, I think. Oh, is it already? Okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, even still, right, uh, you can say only 20,000 people or however much it ends up, but like, it will sell more than that. You know, it will. Yes. Um, which is cool. And thanks to Zhugi X, we know that uh, the original version, um, he posted on Twitter that the original version grossed more than $5 million in revenue in the United States, which is not a lot, <laughs> but that's still about 100K copies on the Wii U. Yeah. You know, which is, uh, is pretty impressive, right? Uh, and I, I mean, maybe impressive is not the right word, but considering how f- much of a flop the Wii U was. This will do better than that, right? That's that's yeah. an absolute baseline. Right? It's like that is know? the baseline, yeah. And, and um, so, yeah. Here's a question. Uh, do, how do you think the the different platforms will do? What do you think will be number one most successful? Oh, it's going to be Switch by Switch. a fucking Definitely long shot. Definitely Switch, yeah. Uh, just by, I mean, it's, I think Steam will probably do pretty well too though especially in the long run as it goes on sale and mm-hmm. that, you know uh, pc games have such a long tail you know yeah um so and then ps4 i i, I get why they're porting it to ps4 but i honestly don't think it's that big of a market for this game on ps4 we'll see i i think it'll do well enough still and obviously the port is paid for so they don't have to worry about that yeah. also right mm-hmm. but ps4 will be the worst selling version of this game yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you know what's weird about 
uh, you you saying that the Wii U version sold like hundred thousand? I bought that game, and uh-huh. it's such a for some reason to me it's like a fever dream because I don't remember purchasing it. <laughs> <laughs> And, like, I can almost pinpoint every time I bought a game. I do not remember buying that game. Honestly, I, I agree with you. I can't remember either. That was one of the last, like, physical Wii U games I bought before I switched over, I think. Yeah, it was just like, I need this game, you know? So I just, I didn't buy it at launch either. I just, like, oh, really? one day you I just bought it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, but either way, I think it's interesting that, like, you know, I think this is a right fit for kickstarter as a platform obviously yeah. right you, this you know i i got, can't do the number in my head right now but like they're averaging around 60 dollars per backer right yeah. which yeah. for a game that's years old is it's you know it's people are clearly willing to pay yeah i think the lowest one's like 40 bucks for the digital version yes yeah yeah, yeah. uh which is, uh, which is, which is a good do. price, actually i think for you know it's this is a port it's not a brand new game 40 is fair um yeah because there's you know there's a lot of game in wonderful 101 and speaking of they're going to be adding a few new things with stretch goals we won't get too much in that because they might continue to expand as the campaign goes on like at the end but we've already got a time attack mode we're probably going to get a new 2d side scrolling adventure starring luca who is uh the worst but yeah i hate luca (laughs) Uh, five hours you'll be all right (laughs) there it is um yes i got and sorry, and the, and the the other the final stretch that we have now is a remixed soundtrack for 175 mil, 1.75 million. What? Very different. <laughs> Very different. Uh, there might be more. There might the, be more. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, who knows how? But I, I think I don't know if this is true. I could be just pulling this out of my ass. But I read somewhere that the general rule of thumb is like, uh, you do double what your first twenty four hours ended up with, basically. Yeah. Um. So probably we'll end up somewhere around the two million range, right? If you, two yeah. and a half million, probably. If you look yeah. at the Kickstarter arcs in general, it's the first twenty four hours and the last twenty four hours where yeah. you do like eighty percent of your numbers. Just kind of like inching along, but like yeah, yeah. That, that that's where you make the money. And if they have um, interesting stretch goals, I imagine they'll hit them. You know? Yeah. I uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Um, but this is only it's crazy part that of they got a million in their first day. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, once again, like, maybe I mean, they, they set the bar low enough, goals. but... It was crazy. Yeah, but even still, like, their big goal, their, their, yeah. their end goal was 500k for a PS4 version. Not end goal, but, you know, that was, like, that was their, that, that was 10 times the original funding amount. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, because I think that there was always, because when this first got rumored there would be a Kickstarter, there was questions about how much will they be asking for. Yeah. And I think 50k was lower than everyone sort of expected, you know? Um, I think people had expected it to be like, oh, PS4, Switch, and PC would just be like... One thing. One thing. But then they did it like, oh, well, first Switch, which was... Their priorities also made sense, right? Like Switch, then Steam, PC, PS4. Then mm-hmm. PS4, yeah. Um, cool stuff. But uh, yeah, we do have some more stuff. Platinum-related stuff, actually. Yeah. Because right before they posted the Wonderful 101 Kickstarter, they updated their website, and uh-huh. there was just four. Four. Four and people say, "What, what could this number. mean? Is it one thing? Is it another thing?" Um, we now know that the kick, uh, wonderful one hundred one Kickstarter is one of four new projects Platinum will be announcing. It's the new Capcom Five. It's the, the Platinum hashtag, Four. Platinum Four. I like it. It's very clearly a throwback to the Capcom Five. Right. Yes. The fucking Capcom Five. What a spit in the face of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know. Um... But so so that's in, so I imagine this will be part of their larger initiative with self-publishing if i were to yes. take a guess right because i mean we know for sure they've been working on two original new ips that yes. they want to self-publish for a while now i mean i want to temper expectations and say one of them is almost certainly mobile so just yes get that out of the way one of the four is probably going to be mobile okay well i'm sad now this, uh, is, this is worse than the capcom 5 <laughs> well that's well. still that's still three i mean one is a remaster but at least two other new games right or we'll, well see yeah, I was gonna we'll ask. We'll see. So, yeah. like you said, Kamiya has not made a game since 2013. Yeah. Do you think that one of the four is that? It has to be. Scalebound being brought back. Thanks, Phil. Well, yeah. uh, no, um, I mean, I do think that one of these is a Hideki Kamiya game because um, Kamiya said in that same interview that I keep mentioning, that I keep referencing, um, yeah, you know, I worked on Astro Chain in, in a supervisory role, and that was cool. But I really like directing. I really mm-hmm. like getting in the thick of it. 
right? Which to me indicates he's not done, right? He's not yeah. done. Yeah, Scalebound was a setback, but I think he's ready to come back. Um, and one of those original IPs that they, that Inaba has been mentioning for about two years now, um, one of them, he said, hey, we think this is going to uh, completely change how you think about action games, which is big words. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, and, and maybe it doesn't live up to those grand expectations, but if anyone is going to do that, I think it would be Kamiya, right? The guy who very much invented the character action genre, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, yeah I, I definitely think one of them is a Kamiya game. For sure. Uh, um, yeah, and, and then I guess... going to be character action? Yeah, they said he said it was a character action game, but it was it would not be it, it revolutionized. I don't remember the exact quote, but it was big words about <laughs> what it was going to do for the genre. <laughs> uh, which I think is interesting because, like you know, platinum is. I would I would not say platinum. They they are all within the genre, yeah. But they're all pretty distinct from each other, right? Astral Chain is not oh, Bayonetta, sure. which is not yeah, Wonderful yeah, yeah. One Hundred One. So I'm very interested to see, you know, if those things are in their brain all like in the same camp. What does the what outside the, the box thing look like? Is you know? this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so I'm, I'm very interested to see what that means. Also, I think that Wonderful 101, sorry to go back to Wonderful 101, mm. but I think Wonderful 101 remaster is such a good way to get their foot in the door, you know? I think that's why it was smart for them to ask Nintendo for to be able to publish this game on their own, because it is the least risky endeavor, you know? It's mm-hmm. a game that is already essentially made, mm-hmm. uh, is paid for. They just have to pay a little bit more for porting costs, but, yes. you know. So that's a good foray into uh, to self publishing, going into these other three games, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, so that's good. And they also I also said th- they were gonna um, fix up some of the camera issues. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, some <laughs> of the stuff and like making the onboarding process easier, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, which I think is going to be interesting because Wonderful One Hundred One. Like, you know, we people, it's one of the games where I think people most reasonably could ask, hey, how is the Wii U? Like, there's the single screen version, but like, it doesn't work quite as well on the Wii U, right? And so it's neat that they're, that they are reassessing that, right? Because yeah. I think that, w- that would be a very weird wart on the whole game, obviously, because that's not around anymore. Um, yeah. And it, it does assert that, you know, I think outside of like Nintendo Land and like Game and Wario, there's probably not many Wii U games that they couldn't find some way to make work. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um, for sure. But uh, anyways, yeah, I mean, you could you could already play the game without the gamepad. Yeah, but it it wasn't it wasn't ideal. It wasn't ideal, and they, they, which is why they said they're re, kind of rethinking how. And it's yeah, interesting the they whole said split screen stuff didn't work very well when it was on just the TV. Yeah, I know. I know that they said. I mean, they said in the interview they're like the single screen stuff where you had both on this TV was a very last minute addition to that game. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they didn't have time to refine on the way they wanted to, so it works out. Um, so yeah, I mean, well, who knows when we'll see the rest of the Platinum 4, whatever that may entail. I hope it's um, soon. I hope they're not, like, I hope we're not in this for, like, the entirety of 2020, like... <laughs> E3. E3. Maybe, who knows? You know, I mean, the, once again, Platinum, they're sort of known for having a lot of plates spinning at one time. Yeah. Um, so, who knows? And by the way, they did, they did clarify, um, before you go asking when's, like, Bayonetta 2 gonna be on PC, when is, you know... Uh, actual chain. chain they said this is a very specific situation that the nintendo led us to this is not like a general policy of things we've done with them yeah fucking uh, never nerds suck it <laughs> yeah um but speaking Fire of switch. that though uh, in a m- relatively minor new uh news note but uh sort of speaking to nintendo's change in policy damon x machina is coming to pc in february which well, that's not surprising well, no. I mean, Octopath did the same thing. But now, yeah. you know, it used to be that Nintendo would, when they did exclusives, they tended to be permanent. Exclusive. Where now they're clearly more fine with timed exclusives and then a PC version later. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I was just going to say, because they, they didn't publish it in Japan anyway, and they didn't yes. own the copyright or anything. Yes. Uh, so like, It's that. a pretty good game. Uh, but very, I do think it does tie into a thing that... Stuff. Yeah. We can talk some about with the thing we're about to discuss with their earnings report, but... um. Nintendo was sort of, they said at the start of the Switch generation that they wanted to sort of help bring back Japanese development, which is big words, right? But I think with the way that Sony has really seeded a lot of um, the market in terms of like engaging with developers and, and that type of um, work, 
like it's weird that like you know nintendo has worked with marvelous they've worked with koei tecmo for things like fire emblem and they're working with you know square for things like bravely and octopath like nintendo is now uh, publishing a lot of these japanese games in the west like they're sort of staking their claim in that territory as part of their strategy which is why i imagine they're trying to maintain good relationships with companies like platinum right where like yeah. that relationship is worth more than the wonderful 101 to them you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um so yeah so it'll be interesting to look at that stuff moving forward but speaking of like i mentioned we did we got a, a myriad of earnings reports uh this go around um because that's all the fiscal years start to end at the same time all the quarters end at the same time so it all happens within a week of each other um and we're gonna talk over some of the things you should know from them how about that so we're not gonna give you a bunch of a million numbers but let's do nintendo first all right so top line we're at 52 million switches now right so we passed xbox one um in terms of like nintendo we passed the super nintendo shit sad uh, and then we're at 310 million software units sold, which means we're probably going to pass the 3DS within a year, which is yep. pretty exciting. Um, but then for the games themselves, the big one, the one that's broke, breaking the records is Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is at 16 million units in a month and a half, um, wow. which is the new record. The previous record was Pokemon at, uh, with uh, Sun and Moon, which was 14.67. Yes. Um, so by almost a million and a half copies, this game blew past it. Um, Biggest which, Nintendo opening ever. Yes. Good thing you guys ever. boycotted. Yeah, the boycott <laughs> was successful, you guys. Okay. We did it, you guys. Um, but I do think it's interesting. Why, why do you think this happened with this game in particular, right? Because we can't say the hype won. cycle did it. <laughs> oh, because no. it's Pokemon. Because no, everybody wanted a console Pokemon. Just being Pokemon. Because, because if Pokemon... it was just Pokemon, it would have done Sun and Moon numbers, right? Yeah. This is beyond it's... Sun and Moon numbers. Correct. But this is a home console Pokemon. Uh, but I don't even think it's just that, to be honest. I, I think mm. we are... Maybe maybe some of it is, oh, it's on a home console, right? Mm-hmm. Um, though I would argue still most of the appeal of Pokemon is still handheld, right? Yes. <laughs> but... But um, I, I think that Sword and Shield. I mean, obviously, there's you can factor in. Oh, uh, well, all of Nintendo's franchises are doing better than ever, and whatever. But also, those had a, a a their previous high was nowhere near as what Pokemon already was. You know, so mm-hmm. the thought was, oh, well, does Pokemon have room to grow like that? It's already so high, and the answer turned out to be a resounding yes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think part of it, you have to give credit where credit is due. They put out an appealing product. They put out a game that people wanted, right? And, and I think that comes down to stuff like stuff that, you know, maybe the hardcore audience is kind of annoyed at, right? But I, I do think. You're talking about silly Pokemon Camp here. Like Pokemon Camp, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think things like that help it grow on social media. Uh, I, I think also, area. sorry, go on. The wild area, I think, is a big one. Yeah, I think the wild area is a big one. You can say, oh, it's ugly, it's this or that. But I think the, the reception to the wild area has largely been positive. Yeah, right? I mean, you know, you see a tweet where somebody is, like, walking around and a cub chew runs up to them and the cub chew is just, like, the cutest fucking thing you've ever seen and it stops and it, like, wants a hug, you know? <laughs> and pe- people are like, this is adorable and they spread it everywhere. So... I think that has something to do with it. Sure. Yeah, and I it's mean, like easier than ever too to post that stuff on. Social I was gonna media. say, I think, yeah. I think, I think that all three of you are right, really, right? Which is, I think, that, I think that genuinely adding in the console market to the handheld people is additive, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can say that that most of the people that bought Pokemon is people that were there for handhelds, but I think you could attribute there's a market of people that only want to play on their TV, and Poke- this is the first time you can do that with Pokemon ever. Right. So that adds on. Then, like you said, Pokemon Camp is very good. And the Switch is the first system that you can actually capture from easily. that has Pokemon on it. You know, mm-hmm. like there's just that's that to me is, is a is a recipe for three things that just lead to you having this kind of success. And, and uh, they just did a good job making the Pokemon shine in this game. I really do think that, you know, sure. Yeah, like, oh, the animations or whatever. But turns out like, you know, I mean, there's a reason why this shit's going viral, you know? Like, I think people genuinely are... They was, are reacting very positively to how the Pokemon look in this game. And I do think it's interesting, because like you said, um, 
with with the way it goes viral, the, a lot of the growth for this was in Japan specifically. Pokemon has yeah. been on the decline in Japan, and Sun and Moon sort of reversed that trend. And you mean Sword and Shield? So you Sword and Shield. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, but when but when it did so, you know, I this is anecdotal, but there are people that in that are in chats that I'm in that are native Japanese speakers, and they say like, "Hey, no, like Twitter is alight with Pokemon." every day in my timeline and not like for like gaming people like just like general populist people they're still talking about pokemon they're still tweeting out pokemon camp videos they're still retweeting fan art like it, it has caught on in japan in a way that the last couple of games hasn't since black yeah. and white yeah i mean Pokemon is literally it's in japan in particular has been on a decline every entry since black and white has sold worse than the last yeah. you know um and then here's freaking Sword and Shield, which has a good chance of outselling all of them not named, that were not on the original Game Boy. Yes. Mm-hmm. At the, at the crazy. mayhem of Pokemania. That is crazy, you know? Like, uh-huh. at, at this point, it is guaranteed to sell more than Diamond and Pearl, which is currently the third most, the third best-selling Pokemon game. So Didn't you promise me last week we would be done with Pokemon? I thought, you know, I had that thought earlier. Yeah, I was going to introduce liars. it with that, but then I didn't. But okay. <laughs> but we, you know, by me, I think we've said our case. Um, next up, this there is a is... different kind of discussion. Ah, I hate you. You're wrong. <laughs> Glad to me. Luigi's Mansion Three oh. is, the, is the other big headline I would say out of here. Five point three seven million for Luigi's Mansion, which is already p- faster than the whole lifetime sales of Luigi's Mansion Two. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. Um, which I is wild. Game, so it's it's it. uh, yeah. I mean, it's now the second biggest Mario franchise. Well, I guess third if you count Mario Party. It's like Mario Kart, Mario Party, and then Luigi in terms of Mario spinoffs. It's already passed, in fact, Mario Maker 2 and New Super Mario Brothers. Mm-hmm. So it just came out, it came out last. Yeah. Of all three of those. <laughs> Which is why. It came out in October. Cool. Uh, Luigi. And, it's the year of Luigi again. Luigi's Mansion, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess Year of Luigi Redeemed, right? But um, <laughs> it, it, Luigi's Mansion 3 is fascinating because you could say, oh, yeah, sure, I expected it to sell this much. No, you didn't. I'm no, telling you, no, you didn't. I didn't. <laughs> because. <laughs> like Luigi's Man- again, this has already almost outsold the entirety of Luigi's Mansion Two, right? Uh, and Luigi's Mansion Two was already an insane success. Six million copies is ridiculous, you know. Sure. Um, and and if it has the kind of legs that Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon did, hell, if it just has the kind of legs that most Switch games do, you know, like this is gonna be a ten million seller. Do you know how little amount of Nintendo franchises have hit that milestone? It's a very small number. <laughs> Uh, so it's like I don't. It's weird because like you think of Luigi's Mansion on paper, and it does not sound like this giant mainstream success that it Dude. that it is. You know? Yeah, it appeals to people, man. I, um, my sister who is somebody who doesn't play video games all the time. You know, she's not huge into gaming, uh, but she does have a Switch, and she was just she loves Luigi's Mansion. You know, she. Mm-hmm. Played the first one on GameCube. She played it on 3DS. She couldn't wait for this game. And then I have another friend. You know, she she barely plays any video games at all. Picked up a Switch on Black Friday. First game she got, Luigi's Mansion. She's Luigi's been Mansion, playing yeah. it and I, texting it's... me, asking me questions about it. You know, it's just, I was like, people who don't really play games a lot, they just, something about Luigi's Mansion is super appealing to people. It's a very charming game. That's, yeah. That's... The, the ladies time, love Luigi. They do. <laughs> they I, do. They, like, Bill mentioned out. that. I mean, like, it sounds like a joke, but Bill Trin straight up at E3 was like, yeah, we did market research. And turns out Luigi, just the character Luigi, has a very strong appeal to women and children. Hey, we saw that picture um, at E3 with Luigi with those girls around. <laughs> yeah. The ladies love Luigi, but Luigi's a little intimidated by the ladies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but I do think also. Sorry. Go ahead, Els. <laughs> I was just going to say he's non threatening, so. I think I, like I think that. sort of the game has that too, though, right? It, it is because you, you say it's so far removed from original two D Mario, right? Yeah. But like two D Mario, a lot goes unbeaten most of the time by people, right? Yeah. Because it does get harder towards the end, and I think it puts people off a certain at a certain level. I think that Luigi's Mansion is, I mean, closest to a, a point of like adventure game of anything, right? Like you're interacting with things in the environment, you're just, you're sucking on them with a the vacuum rather than you know clicking on them um yeah. but i think that because there is that kind of go at your own pace scenario it can better appeal to people that aren't putting hundreds of hours into games every year right and know all the rules right. of level design yeah, yeah, yeah um which i think is and, and, and I, I do think like i think luigi's mentality has had really really strong word of mouth you know 
I think people are playing this game and we're like, man, that was, that was super good. That was super charming, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think this was the biggest factor in its success, right? But I do think the co-op actually helps a lot. Because it is something very easy to just... You can very easily understand what's going on in Luigi's Mansion, you know? So, so it's a game that you could pass a controller to and they will very quickly understand what they need to do. You know? Sure. Uh, and you have a blast doing it. You have a blast playing it. So. Uh, yeah. So, once again, good for Luigi. I mean, by the way, just Mario on the whole is just wild on Switch, right? Like, come on. It's like really good. Mario Party's, Mario Party's going to hit 10 million next quarter. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, by the way, second best selling game of the quarter. More, more than Luigi, it did 6 million. Jesus <laughs> and, Christ. Uh, oh, and the year, the fiscal year. Oh, the fiscal year. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, um, the old Super, man's got legs. Super Mario Party, the highest selling Mario Party game of all yes, time. Yes, it is. It, uh, okay. it has already outsold Mario Party 8. eight. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, it's gonna be a big old ten million seller, which is yeah. Mario Party Eight Christ. was the highest selling Mario Party. The Wii I think baby, the perfect fit for the Wii. Yeah, you think yeah. of the Wii audience, you think of Mario Party. It's like that's a match made in heaven. But which apparently, is, an even bigger match made in heaven is Switch Hot. Is the Switch? That's what, the, the, which makes Super Mario Party even more impressive, right? The fact that like you know, because I do think, and I guess this is maybe an underlying trend in the games we're talking about here: Pokemon, Luigi's Mansion. Right, mm-hmm. Mario Party, uh, Mario Kart. I think I don't want to dismiss it, right? Because clearly, having these hardcore games like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey did a lot for the system. But I think it gave people the idea that, like, that's the kind that you have to have that kind of game to do well on Switch. You know, you have to be a, a big AAA production like Breath of the Wild, mm-hmm. right? To do well, I don't think that's this. I mean, clearly that's not true, right? It's like, why uh, Sile Savvy's gonna pass 15 million, baby. Oh boy. Oh <laughs> Here we go. Uh, we go Animal this. Crossing. Yeah, actually, though. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of the mix, of, I would say, of casual and hardcore, Ring Fit Adventure passed 2 million copies, mm-hmm. which is good. Yep. Yeah. And uh, they said it's particularly doing well in Southeast Asia or East yeah, Asia. Where I'm from. Yeah. There it is. Uh, and then Astral Chain and Mario Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 both passed a million copies, which is crazy for Astral Chain in particular, but both of them, right? Uh, not super high budget games. So this is, uh, they're happy. I could it. be wrong. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just want to put that out there. But mm-hmm. according to my napkin math, this would be uh, the best selling platinum game by revenue. Uh, uh, original, pl- I should say. So not counting like Neon Automata or Metal Gear where they... You know, it was someone like else's IP. IP. Yeah. yeah, right. For an original platinum IP, this would be the most successful platinum game, um, which is crazy. That's a cr- crazy. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, if it didn't even feel like Astro Chain hit that big, especially like I feel like I, I, I personally felt like Bayonetta hit bigger or whatever. But like Astro Chain's a freaking success. A huge well, I think success. Bayonetta just kind of like dominated the the culture, you know, memes or whatever. Right, right, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the like, circles yeah. that are that will post a lot about a game, Bayonetta's aimed at, right? But I do think Bayo 3 could be... Uh, this. I think this bodes well for Bayo 3. I sure. think that Bayo 3 yeah. uh, could be a big hit. Well, apparently everything's a big hit on the Switch, so... Apparently! I mean, literally, like I'm telling you, the only games Sushi that Nintendo has published worldwide that have not hit a million. Sushi Striker, the... Labo 2 through 4. <laughs> Labo. R.I.P. <laughs> Bayonetta 2, which was a port. Yeah. yeah. And Tokyo Mirage Sessions, which is another port. And that's for it. weebs. That, and, and for, for weebs. Yeah. And but that is it. Out. Every other game that they have published, and they've published more than 30 at this point, has been at least a million seller. Sure. The, uh, that is unprecedented success even for Nintendo. Sure. You know? Uh, they are just firing at all cylinders right now. Uh, sure. I mean, you're you're not wrong. Um, I do, but I do think there's one other piece of information from this that's worth mentioning. For your oh. purchasing related decisions, they confirmed they can't lie about this to inv- to investors. Um, no switch hardware this year. No new switch hardware this year, right? So no put all those switch pro rumors in your pocket for 2021, because not now. Good. I won't entertain any of them until at least near the end of the year. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, let's not talk about Switch Pro. Let, let, let's let's. Uh, there was a ton of rumors. We opted yeah. not discuss them. Once yeah. again, we're vindicated. Yeah. Uh, Damn, feels good. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I guess one little final thing, Nintendo Switch Online, 29% adoption rate among people. So clearly the, the, the number's risen faster than you would think. It's actually very comparable to PS and in Xbox Live Gold at this point. I, it's kind of crazy too because um, they te- they mentioned like, hey, a big chunk of revenue that we are getting is because of Nintendo Switch Online. And you think about it, it's only a $20 a year subscription, right? Mm-hmm. So just think about if twenty if a twenty dollars subscription is enough to make a noticeable impact on their financials when they are selling as much hardware and software as they are, right? Think about how profitable PS Plus and Xbox Live Gold are. You know, well, sixty dollars a year. I I can tell you exactly how much that was because okay. Sony also gave their numbers. Hooray! Right, uh, good uh, transition. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is the, so so Sony, of course, as we mentioned at the start of 2019, hey man, don't get too excited for like numbers going out that you know that they're going to do wazoo numbers, but they still did very good for themselves, right? Uh-huh. Um, let's play. Let's here's a question for you: What percent of total of total Sony revenue do you think PlayStation accounts for? They have six divisions, I think. Forty-five. Four. Oh God, I was gonna guess forty-five. I'm gonna guess forty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, 40, 48. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you all lowballed it, actually. Uh, 29%. Oh. How much? 29% of overall business was PlayStation uh, related. 29. We, so we, we didn't lowball it. We didn't lowball it. You, I've, so I got the words wrong. I apologize. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and there, uh, they mean, don't give as many numbers right. as. Well, uh, you know, insurance just makes a lot of money. So. Yeah. Uh, in terms of in terms of uh, their total numbers, they had 108.9 million PS4, so probably 109 million now, right? So still fastest selling console. Um, this is the uh, second year in a row where digital has become the majority spend uh, for their uh, online, and that number I mentioned earlier, PSN uh, has generated over 12.48 billion dollars for them alone. Jesus I mean, Christ. God. I mean, like, I'm telling you, these paid online services are just so profitable mm-hmm. for no, uh, for almost no effort, too. You know, it's crazy. Give <laughs> us more free games. Uh, <laughs> give us GameCube on one. Give us GameCube on yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting, though, because, yeah, like, a lot of these numbers are good. They are. I don't want to downplay them. But you're going to uh, downplay them. But I'm going to downplay them. <laughs> uh their holiday quarter was very weak this year yes uh and kind of this fiscal year has been a little yeah i mean this is the year that they passed the 100 million and that's a big deal mm-hmm. very big deal but we're, i mean uh, we're squarely they, in the final year of the console cycle things are slowing down uh and i, I do want to shout out a tweet from matt piscatella at matt piscatella if you like if you like talking about game sales you should follow that man on twitter he's great uh, but he was like, hey, you know, there's a misnomer about, oh, people are not buying hardware anymore because because they know that next gen is around the corner, right? Uh, and that's not really true. Like, people don't really... The kind of person who's buying a system in year five, year six is not like, hmm, I'm going to go to here and spend $500 on a PS5, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, it's more the PS5 is coming because the PS4 is slowing down, you know, not the other way around. <laughs> there, there is just sort of a ceiling on the amount of people that will buy a dedicated gaming console, and it's probably around 120 million people, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the closer it's, you get to that, yeah. the more it's going to slow down. But uh, and, yeah. related to the PS5, the PS5, when talking to investors, uh, people asked, Hey, how much will the PS5 uh, cost? And their answer was officially, we haven't decided yet. We're waiting for Xbox to say. Well, did they say Xbox? <laughs> they said com- competition. Okay. But Which yeah, I mean... <laughs> There's only one choice. <laughs> They're, <all> the <laughs> yeah. They're waiting uh, for Stadia's return. <laughs> I, I mean, how long... Uh, is it possible he's lying? Or do we buy this? I mean, I think if... If that's literally, I have. Do we buy it on my dock in front of me? Um, okay. the, the the answer is, uh, I think it's one of two price points, right? They're looking, we're gonna do this or this, and we're gonna see sort of what they're doing, right? Yeah. But I mean, I don't think that they're like, well, it could be anything right now. We don't know. Like, like they have to have a pretty good idea. I mean, they know how much it's yeah. gonna cost them, yes. right? And they have to have a pretty good idea of, okay, we're not willing to take more than the X amount of loss on this hardware, mm-hmm. also, right? 
I imagine much like the PS when the PS4 launched, they want it so that when you buy a PS5 and, and a subscription to PS Plus, that will already be profitable. Yes. I, I'm assuming that's the model they want to go with. Um, so, like, surely, like, they have to have a pretty good idea of how much this thing is going to cost, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have so, to. Like, I don't know. And, like, how long can you play the waiting game, right? What, who, who, someone has to blink first. Well, uh, I mean, because we know that when we, uh, the, in conversations they had about PS4 launch, uh, when they announced it, they didn't announce the price because they wanted to wait for E3. Yeah. And they, and they basically said they wanted to leave themselves room. But they, always, okay. but they were always thinking either 500 or 400. And they ultimately decided on 400. 400. Um, which they did say they didn't know Microsoft had did 500 when they decided. But who knows if that's true. Um, but I, I imagine they're in a similar spot, right? Where that, that was so successful for them last time. I'm sure they would love to get the chance to one up again. Right. But uh, again, someone has to blink first. Yeah. And, and because Sony's not at E3, inherently the timetables for these two systems is going to be different. Even though they're both launching in the holiday system, yeah, holiday season, holiday season, uh, Sony will, is not tied to E3 anymore. They don't have to do the price in June, but they do have to do the price at some point mm-hmm. <laughs> before uh, November, yeah. right? Uh, so, like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's such a weird thing for for them to say. Yeah, we're waiting for to see what the competition does. Sure, I, I think that's just such a weird statement. Uh, I mean. Uh, it's the answer you're gonna. I guess they could have just said, "We'll tell you at a later time," but yeah. that's the answer they gave. Um, Philly the one Spencer other final like, piece yeah, of Sony we'll, related we news. We want to know what the PS5 is gonna cost. Then we're, Phil, Phil Spencer wouldn't say that. <laughs> we'll see. Um, the 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 final piece of Sony related news is that there was an unfortunate closing of one of their first party studios, which is was uh, Sony Manchester. Um, which is a relatively new studio, only got founded in 2015, uh, assisted with with VR dev, but never made their own game. But uh, s- VR is dead. Let's do it. <laughs> we did Let's it. kill VR. I imagine part of it was just, like I said, they were around for five years and never put out a game themselves. Um, that means the VR is dead. Well, that, that's, that's just that easy, folks. We did it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Analysis. Analysis. Put work in it. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, that's unfortunate, obviously. For all those people that lost their jobs, it was it was yeah. one of those things that sucks because like they were literally talking about like, hey, put in your applications last week on Twitter, and then like a week yeah, later they don't exist. Not a good luck. Well, um, because oops. then it pretty clearly indicates, oh hey, they did not know about this until just today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, that's that's depressing. Yeah. Um, speaking of Xbox earning reports. Um, <laughs> the earnings were down. Um, yeah. The bad news uh, at first is soft. Uh, overall gaming revenue was down twenty one percent. The hardware revenue was forty three percent, and the software revenue was eleven percent down. Um, yeah. Which I imagine part of which is tied to, like we said, end of lifetime stuff. Part of the services revenue being down, I imagine, is. Um, they said specifically games like Fortnite and Red Dead didn't come out in 2019 that took up a huge chunk of the market and they saw an appreciable drop in how much they were making without those huge games that were helping sort of keep the late gen life cycle afloat, essentially. Which is a statement on how big those games were. Correct. Yeah. Damn. Um, so yeah. It's all so, about uh, Game Pass. How's that well, doing? that's the good news. Game Pass subs doubled in that quarter, which is after the Gears of War launch, which was famously the time that they had the biggest spike in any single day. So Game Pass What's itself is growing a lot. At that, like damn, like at Game Pass, the 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 growth it's seeing is accelerating at a pace that is like unfathomable. You know, like a lot of people are subscribing to Game Pass. It's crazy. Um, we're probably I around how like. Much that... Sorry, go on. I, I don't want to shoot guess a number, but like, I mean, we're squarely above five million at this point, probably more, right? I would say we're, we're almost certainly in double digits. Yeah, so we're almost surely almost at ten million, eight probably. Digits, I should say. But um, uh, I wonder how big of a spike Halo on PC was. You know, that's a very interesting question. Uh, because we know on Steam itself, it sold a, more than a million. I, th- I think it was well above a million, but I just know for sure it was more than a million. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the amount of people who were willing to spend full price on it. How many people were just like, I want to subscribe to five for five bucks and mm. uh, ten bucks and yeah. play Reach? It's it's just crazy when I think about how far Game Pass has come. But like two years ago, um, going to going to PAX and it was like kind of new, and they were really pushing it. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at the Xbox booth, like mm-hmm. 
just everybody that you would walk over there would talk talking to you about Game Pass. And, and at the time, it almost seemed like kind of gimmicky it, to me, at least. Sure. And I was yeah. like, you know, this is a cool idea. I just don't know how well it's going to work. And, you know, it's it's cool to just see how how much they've improved on it and just how just how well it actually it does work. And like now I'm 100 percent believer on it. I'm like, it's it's amazing. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. super cool. You know, it took me a little while to, to be sold on it, but uh, it, it just keeps getting better, too. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy it exists. Sure. Me, too. This podcast sold me on it. We did. It. <laughs> <laughs> it did. We're a very pro Game Pass. Uh, uh, and and I, I think it also just shows, man, like, Game um, I think this is going to have a very big effect on next gen. I think this is going to have an effect on how people buy video games. You know, like, sure, I, I, yeah. this is a fundamental shift in, like, how we, how we purchase video games, you know? And, and I mean, look at that Sony number I just said, $12 billion, right, for PSN. For like PS Plus. Mm-hmm. There's a, well, that's, well, that was all of PSN. It wasn't just PS Plus, I should clarify. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but still, you know, that's a huge amount of money, right? For Microsoft, it's not as much because my Xbox makes up like four percent of their total business, right? Versus like drop in the bucket. So, you know, <laughs> that's that's the, that's the difference between Sony and, and Microsoft in terms of scale of companies, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, like you said, they're sort of they're looking three or four years down the line a little bit, right? And yeah. sort of a side into that is Phil Spencer gave an interview today that got a bunch of headlines saying Phil Spencer doesn't consider Sony and Nintendo competition. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw that. Which the actual thing was he does not consider them competition when it comes to cloud infrastructure, which like, <laughs> of course, they don't yeah. have cloud infrastructure. You Sony know, kind I, of you, does. You, in fact, you in fact do Sony is, is using Microsoft's yeah. cloud infrastructure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all, all you have to do is, you know cherry pick the quote and and make it oh it's so headline. easy it's that's so how the internet explain. works buddy uh, mm. welcome to clickbait you know but, um, <laughs> um i will say i do want to be a downer on xbox as well just to be keep it fair mm-hmm. well, it wasn't on <laughs> nintendo uh, <laughs> don't don't worry about that uh, nintendo's mobile's awful right now there we yeah, do that's true did. nintendo's mobile is a fucking failure mario kart tour should be ashamed anyway um yeah. microsoft their hardware sales, though, are very down, like, by a sizable chunk. Yes. Uh, and it was already lagging behind the PS4, you know, but the decline on Xbox is even bigger than it was on PS4 in terms of hardware sales, um, which is to say, oh, man, Xbox did not sell a lot of hardware in the year of 20, in the year 2019. You know. I wonder how much was an artificial inflation from One X. Uh, not even artificial, right? But I wonder if the, the One X maybe hits its market cap relatively. Yeah, may yeah. Hit its market one, cap. yeah, yeah. And the, and the One X did do a lot for them, right? It did. Yeah. But like, still, and it makes you wonder, like, going into next gen, right? The, the positions they're in. I think it's undeniable that PlayStation is just dominant. You know, yeah. PlayStation is seen as the default system. When you think of video games, you think of PlayStation. I'm just I don't. With you. Well, I you're Nintendo, but uh, but okay. The mass market, okay. <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation is king. You can't deny it. No, I mean uh, deny it to my dying day. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, but like, so going into the next gen, though, I think like the Xbox brand is undeniably so much weaker than playstations it just is you can't like that's just a fact sure um Um, but i mean that's why i think they're they're trying to play in places where sony isn't right right and also i mean i wanted to mention this when we were talking about the cloud infrastructure stuff uh, a part that didn't get covered in the gaming thing, but I think it's very relevant to why phil spencer was doing an interview with that type of question is um in cloud in commercial cloud services right for microsoft um they saw a 36 percent growth year over year which is a huge amount which is and they're making 12 billion dollars off of cloud stuff so like i mean that's psn right that's sony's primary money maker is just in their cloud infrastructure so like clearly this is a thing for microsoft on the whole and xbox is part of that right yeah xbox is just it's it's a small very actually very small part of that right Uh, but like Cloud, cloud is cloud computing is a big thing for Microsoft, you know. And, um, um, so yeah, so I mean, we'll, like you know, we'll see how it goes down the line. Obviously, next gen will be interesting, like you said. You know, I've, I will. I would not be shocked if PlayStation has no reason to deviate from what they've been doing, but I think it'll be neat 
to have sort of all three playing more fully than ever before in just different spaces, right? Switch, yeah. PS5, uh, and Xbox might be all just very different things. And we talked about Game Pass, and I do think I do think that does shift the metric of what is success for Xbox, though, right? It does. Yeah. Sure. I think uh, even you know, who knows how the Series X will do, right? But I think I think there is a scenario where Xbox as a whole is successful, but does not necessarily mean that that Xbox hardware is like selling more than PlayStation Five. Mm-hmm. Know? Um, so, so how much do you think uh, this was like kind of foretold by the beginning of you know this console era? You know. Oh, I think it's a ton. I think there's a ton this time. Uh, you know, they're having to write... We talked about it with the UI a couple of weeks ago, right? Like, the Xbox One is this sort of unfortunate thing where they're still having to build on this fundamentally cracked foundation, right? Mm-hmm. In a lot of its uh, implementation. And so I think that when they get a full new pass at it, I do think, hopefully, um, some of these, some of the things that limited in this round won't limit them. Yeah, I mean, comebacks are definitely possible, right? I mean, like, just look at Wii U to Switch, right? Like, sure. Yeah, yeah because I was thinking, hell, like... Look, or look at just PS3 to PS4 versus 360 to Xbox One, right? Like, Yeah, exactly. Like, the 360 was arguably, like, the winner of that console yeah. generation, right? Yeah, 360 yeah. was the default, right? Was, like, in that same was, way, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I guess my thing is, when it comes to 360... I, I know we point to that and say, oh, well, you know, that means Microsoft could come back, right? Mm-hmm. But I do think also though, and maybe this is just maybe people didn't notice at the time, and now I could just say because hindsight is twenty twenty, right? But I, I do think you could see where Microsoft started going wrong at the end of the three sixty generation. Yeah. Whereas at the same time, I think you could see where Sony was doing right yeah. uh, at the end of the uh, end of the, uh, end of that generation, end of PS three. Well, I mean, and, and, sure, you- no, part of the Xbox doing it doing it wrong was you could tell it was in their management at the time. Yeah, and yeah. Even the beginning of the Xbox One, it was in their management at the time. And now that they've switched, I mean, you know, it's it's only it's hopefully going to get better for them at least because, um, and I think it already has. You know, they, uh, I can't remember what's his name before Phil Spencer, but that guy was an idiot. Don Magic. Don, yeah. But my thing is, it's not even that Xbox will not do better. I guarantee, I guarantee you Xbox will do better next gen. It will, like, it will not we, do better than yeah. PS5. I seriously No, no, no. But it, but it will do better than the, the Xbox One did, right? I, I feel yes. pretty confident in that. Yeah, I feel but confident about that. I guess my thing is, I, I can see Microsoft do taking all the steps to come back stronger next gen. But on the flip side, I don't see Sony messing things up, though. You know, I don't see uh, Sony... Not really, either. I, no. Like, S- Sony has we, pretty much stayed the course. Like, you yeah. can criticize them for a We have squabbles, things. but, like, they're not systemic issues, right? No, yeah. yeah. I, 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 it, they're in a good place. Sony is in a good place. But I think, you know? I think that... I mean, you, you people want to be the market leader, obviously, right? Yeah. Humans are competitive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think that at the end of the day, functionally, if Xbox is up, Sony doesn't have to be down, right? Sure, like those right. things, like like yeah. when you're going back to your investors, you're not saying we beat Sony, but we're both down. We're saying we're up than we were last go round, right? No, but the the thing I, I wanted to maybe talk about a little bit was uh, Muzzy's claim that PlayStation is now def- like the de facto, like in the public eye, the de facto like video game brand. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I was just thinking like. They had a good shot, like in the Xbox 360 era. I was just thinking maybe the consumer doesn't really care about brands; they just care about what's popular at the moment. I guess yeah, that's also possible. Prob- possible. I mean, I, 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 because I do remember a lot of takes back when the Xbox One and the PS4 were launching that were saying the idea of, of console leadership flipping is gone because of ecosystems, right? Because people yeah. have been buying on Xbox; they have Xbox friends that they'll never go to the PS4, right? But Clearly, you- they did. Right. Um, yeah. And so I think that, you know, like you, you know, and I think this where it indicates that like there is more volatility than than what is ever present. Right. Than what, than what you think it is. Right. It's only in hindsight that you can see how people were in less powerful positions than what you thought, you know. Right. Right. Um, but anyway, I guess at the end of the day, there's definitely just a there. There's a good chance all of them are just pretty profitable. Next sure. Gen. We'll see. Hopefully. Hope. So, that's, yeah, that's the hope, right? That's yep. the ideal, right? Every, yeah. Everyone is doing well. Um, everyone wins. In, in competition brings out the best in everybody. So. Sure. Um, uh, so that was a lot of sales talk, right? 
a lot of, a lot of what costs why to be successful we can all say the biggest factor in any game success is its placement on the list the, the list. list follow along in the pace bin below as every week we add a game to an ever growing list of as i scroll down 163 video games quite a few um uh, they're not all the best video games of all time there's some of the worst video games of all time on this list. There's some of the most mediocre games of all time on this list, but we grow it. We compare apples and oranges sometimes, but we do it because that's, it's a good vessel to talk about video games. Um, last week, I did not write down who added. Does anyone remember? It was me. Ills. It was Ills. Ills. It was uh, Metroid, Metroid Prime, Prime Hunters. Prime Hunters. Metroid yeah. Prime Hunters, which ended up at 144 on the list. So pretty low. Um, not quite in hell, but pretty low. Yeah, um, Moose, wow. Well, uh, Moose, <laughs> you're up this week. What do you bring? Hey. Uh, I want to talk about. You said it's not the best games. We have some of the worst games on this list as well, right? But I actually yeah. do want to put one of the best games on this list. Okay. Shocking. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> mm. It's really going uh, against the type. So I'm yeah I, I'm shooting for very high. God. Oh God. With Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Okay. He fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Try to maybe, Rick roll us. I gotta tell you, you're probably gonna be adding a game that you're gonna have to play five hours of. I hope you know that. Oh Jesus! Yeah, fuck. Too late. Oh, too too late. Cool. You take it back. You're locked you in. Back. <laughs> so Musa Mill, well, while you think uh, of what you've so done insane. to yourself, what is Pokemon Amiibo Festival? Pokemon, uh, Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon Amiibo Festival, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, so someone... Crossing... So, um, around 2013-2014, you know, the Wii U was in dire straits, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and, and in a random Nintendo Direct, Nintendo put out this Animal Crossing uh, calendar, or plaza. No, not a calendar, it was a plaza, right? Uh-huh. Where you can... Oh, look, you can interact with Animal Crossing villagers, um... On the Wii U, and it had like a date uh, of where it ended, and so naturally you would think, oh, when this plaza ends, somewhere around there, Animal Crossing is gonna come to Wii U, you know? Oh, baby. Uh, yeah, and so you know you're looking forward to Animal Crossing coming to Wii U for a couple of years. I mean, of course, it's been on every system since since the GameCube. It's not missed a system, you know? Mm -hmm. GameCube, Wii, DS, 3DS. It's been on all of them. Wii U's gonna get its turn. Uh, then E3 2015 rolls around, and we see Animal Crossing characters. Uh -huh. But then we see a fucking board game. <laughs> yeah, bud. So this is made by the Mario Party developers. Uh -huh. It's a board game. You know how Mario Party is like a board game, but it has mini games and stuff like this? This is just a fucking board game, okay? This uh, is a board there game. was like too many games. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. There was <laughs> Desert Escape. Uh, <laughs> um... But for the most part, and the way you controlled this also was very unwieldy because what you had to do, you had, so you had to pass around the gamepad and tap your amiibo onto the gamepad um, to roll the dice. Like, I don't remember exactly what happens when That's you tap the That's exactly what happens. Yeah. yeah. But like, when you play yeah. multiplayer, you all have to pass around the gamepad and use your specific fucking amiibo, amiibo that your character yeah. is. So, so you can't like you can't just use a Wii remote or anything like that. No, you have to pass around the gamepad, so that takes a time in of itself. Pick right? up your amiibo. Uh, pick up your amiibo. In. Scan it, and the scanning <laughs> process is not like you know it takes a, a couple seconds, right? Uh -huh. And you're just playing this very mundane board game, and I like board games. You know, I do. Yeah. But this one is not particularly good. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. It's not quite Candyland levels of simplistic, but it's closer to it than. It's, it's oh close. God. It's close, it's close though. Yeah, it's close. Candyland you know? is horrible. There's, there's absolutely no strategy to it at all. The the no. closest thing you get is buying and selling of turnips. Yeah, sure. That's a that's close to a strategy as you can get, and even that is randomized. And, like, I don't want to say that the only reason this game is a disappointment is because it was not Animal Crossing on Wii U, right? No, because it's uh, also just a bad game. But this game just sucks. It just sucks. It's not yeah. fun. And, and, again, this is not even a thing of casual games. No, I like Mario Party a lot. I would not put Mario Party in hell. Yeah. I would put right. this game in hell. Yeah, and uh, the same. And I like board games a lot, too. But this is just, it, like... It is almost Candyland level board game, and Candyland is the worst fucking board game of all time. It is actually a board game. It's for three year olds. It's a board game it, for three year olds. It, yeah, if it's you're three, fun then when yeah. You're three and you know how much Candyland costs at a retail market? 
Like I'm fucking like, five bucks. It's like fifteen dollars. Yeah. Amiibo festival yeah, yeah, with the fun. amiibos was like eighty. <laughs> Well, I want to argue this for a second. The game of life like really sucks. I just game wanna... of life sucks too, it's but it sucks so is... bad. It's a shitty board game. I agree with that 100. percent But that uh, game at least has a fucking sm some strategy to it. Not really. You know, a little bit. <laughs> and at least when you play it, different things happen every time. This Animal Crossing game is really shitty. It's just a shitty fucking game. Is it? Yeah. I think there's like random events that happen that are so non like. They have nothing to do with anything in the game at all. Like, no, just land on a space, remember. and you're like, we went to the factory, right? And and like, removed from all the extraneous stuff, I think there's a world where I could have enjoyed an Animal Crossing board game video. Could have, sure. I could have. If it was good, I could have. But this this game is not that game. It I sucks. played. I I bought sucks. this game with the amiibos uh, the day it came out. For like sixty dollars or whatever the fuck it was, I played it once. All I needed was that one fucking time. I had a bunch of friends over. I said, "Guys, I just got a new game. It's uh, it's a fuck. It got it's a Animal Crossing game, and it's a board game. It should be a lot of fun, guys." Fucking had like six people over, and I tell you what, we were all fucking bored out of our goddamn minds. Be honest, you would have bought this game for the amiibos yeah. no matter what. To I feed your no amiibo what, to at addiction. Least, at least this? you know, I, I gave it a, the fucking college try. I invited a bunch of people over and it I It was I the feel best bad. case felt, scenario for this game to be good. I was yeah. an yeah. asshole because I invited people over to play some shitty game. <laughs> yeah. And like this, yeah, I don't know. Um so where do I want to put it though, is the question. Uh-huh. I mean it's in hell, no question about it. Uh yes. it's worse than Pokemon Channel. Yes. I, yep. <laughs> it's worse um, than Knack. I haven't played Knack, but I it's worse than right. Knack. But Knack, I mean, Knack should be higher. Uh, but yeah, it's worse than Knack. It's Brandy, we're entering a space level. where you have to weigh in. Now, I don't. I've never played Tulip. I've never played Trash It. I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> on a on a. My gut feeling, though, from what I've seen and what I've heard about Trash It, I think this is above Trash It. <sighs> <laughs> But oh granted, this is almost entirely your call because I think you're the only person who's played both. The, I would say the Amiibo singular Festival. positive about Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Uh, okay. So, okay. Is the aesthetic of Animal Crossing is still cute. That's the yeah. one I, thing. I it has. Desert Escape is genuinely fun. I'm going to say it. Desert Escape is genuinely fun. I heard that was actually fun, but I never bothered with it. Oh, you never Oh, well. It is a fun, it's a fun mode. Like, it, it is. So that, got, that brought me some sort of Not $60 worth of joy. Um, but it's the one you play with the cards, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. For what it's Never worth, it. uh, Amiibo Festival was below it, trash it in the old list. Yeah, but I... I well, knew the me. thing with this, I mean, I wouldn't... I would put Blinks above Amiibo Festival. I agree. Okay. I would also put Blinks above Trash It, though. Mm -hmm. Probably Tulip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can fix um, that, though, later. Point, yeah, well, we might but, fix it. I've already, if potentially, on yeah. the Royal Ranking, which happened this it's, weekend. Go check the archive. True. It's true. It's true. Um, I think right now it should go below Blake's. Okay. I I think it should go below Trash It. I mean, they're both... I mean, this is just... Com like, what pile of shit is, would be worse to step in, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I will say but, Trash It, like I said before, has some pretty decent levels. Okay. Yeah, I mean, at least trash it as bad of a video game it is. It's still a video game. Um, yeah, whereas... well, so is Desert Escape. <laughs> well, I never played that. <laughs> Here's a question, and this you can genuinely say that this is part of your evaluation because it's our list. Do you think the fact that you spent sixty on Amiibo Festival makes you want to put it below trash it? I hate it. No. I'm okay. Not, I'm not. No, I mean, I'm saying I get that. I get why You're you would. To, You're allowed You're to do allowed that. You're allowed to factor in value properly. Oh, well, I'll factor that in when I talk about Pokemon Snap in one mm. bit. But uh, well. <laughs> well, I'm going to remember this for when it comes around for Pokemon Snap. Um, I'm just saying. Well, it but it came with amiibos, and I'm a sucker for. It. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do think Blinks is probably better than this, but I also think Blinks is better than Trash It, and I think this is better than Trash. I think. Well, we, I mean, will you I, I will know. Find we'll be able to tell us. I'll find out soon. I'll find out soon. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. So there it is. That's wait, what, are we putting it below Shadow? I mean, I think Shadow's better than it, too, which is the problem. I think Shadow should move up on the list as well. Yeah, I also think Shadow should move up, though, is my issue. 
Yeah, let's put it below shadow for now. How about let's put it I, below I, shadow? Yeah. I think it goes then, above. I think it's above Sonic in the Secret Rings. Isabella's crying. You know, because you know what you got to give credit games. for for Animal Crossing. Right. When you put the amiibo down, you take it off. It actually rolls the dice. Not a guarantee that the things you do in Sonic and the Secret Rings will actually happen. That is true. This is true. Yeah. Uh, it is better than Secret Rings, uh, but I think Shadow is better than this. But I, um, and we'll see about Trash It. But I'm, I'm not feeling too hot in Trash It, to be honest with you. Oh, well, see. Once you play it, you'll Open have mind. your opinion for him. Open mind, though. Open I'll mind. tell you what. Trash It is also not a good game, like I said, but it's not. Yeah. So I, I'm down to put this below Shadow. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I agree. Okay. We did it. So there it is, 162 Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. We don't really, I really get to do this, right? Uh-huh. Bottom of the list. 160, yeah. Blinks the Time Sweeper. 161, Shadow the Hedgehog. 162, Sonic, uh, excuse me. Ugh. Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. 163, Sonic and the Secret Rings. 164, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. This is definitely bringing my average down. <laughs> You know, as much as we give you Guff Moose and Mill, with this, you have now become the person that has the most games they've added in hell. That's not oh, by man. my design. I should have had three oh, games man. in hell by now. <laughs> um, That's a very do funny. I, oh, am I tied at the club now? No. The hell games? Oh, well, no, no, no. Other I M. guess Other M is kind of... Well, it, no, it doesn't really count. So, yeah, I don't count are. Other M, though. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and club are tied. Look at that. Look at that. I can we'll, overtake we'll, club next. Yeah, next well, time. yeah, no, we'll, we've we're we're really shying away from the shitty club games recently, so we, I think we're okay. Just you wait till my club pick. Hashtag let Muzzy on the game club. Hashtag <laughs> fucking play yeah. all these games. <laughs> Hashtag beat all these fucking games. <laughs> Hashtag it's coming. Hashtag I'm coming. Uh, oh, God, no. there is that is the podcast for this week. That's the last thing we're gonna do before the final phrase. Who wants the final phrase this week? I mean, uh, you know, Brandon you know the wants answer. It. It's all Brandon easy, wants but it. But if someone else wants Brandon? it. Brandon? Sure. Brandon? No, man. So while you do that, Brandon, plugs, plugs, plugs. Uh, hey, you're on this podcast. You made it this far. Give us, if you would, five stars on the service that you're on and subscribe on the service you're on. That way you can catch the next week's podcast, which comes every Monday. And so you can get more of that archive, which includes Silent Hill 2, the game club that just came out. That's a big boy game. That's a, a lot of stuff to get to with Silent Hill 2. See what the thoughts are. We're not going to spoil it here. Come on. Um, of course, as mentioned before, check out the Royal Ranking that we did this weekend to see what has happened to the list already at this point, right? Five games will be moved. Six games will be moved. Who knows where they'll end up? Um, actually, there's, it's not guaranteed that they will be moved. In fact, sometimes they stay in the same spot. But... Uh, what if it, all six games we pick stay in the same spot? Um, pretty funny. Be easy but for me then. You could have caught that Royal Ranking live if you had just followed us on Twitter and on Twitch at twitch.tv and twitter.com slash jumpupsupercast. Easy peasy. That's also how you can know when all the episodes go live. You can support us on Patreon if you think that we're worth money. Which, you know, how do you place value on a human life, you know? Uh, besides all that, of course, we have a Facebook and an Instagram. You can also follow us on um, if you so desire. Um, but that is the, generally the podcast for this week. Once again, I want to thank you all for listening. And now, Brandon, the final phrase. Uh, I'm just going to say, um, I can't wait for Mario Golf on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Hopefully it has a cool story mode. Looking wow. forward to it. Going to be announced at the Nintendo Direct this week. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Go play some video games, everybody. Golf it up. <laughs>